Well, this is his chance for the first time in his career. He's playing and Brady isn't. Other than the 2008 season when Brady made an exit after week one, and that was Rodgers' first year as a starter. So this is it. This is it. The only other games Brady missed was the first four of the 2016 season for the Deflategate suspension. Rodgers has the stage to himself as the NFL's elder statesman. Breeze is gone. Brady's gone. Peyton Manning's long gone. The older quarterbacks are gone. It's him. That's it. Phillip Rivers, gone. I mean, I'm trying to think of other older quarterbacks I'm missing, but it's Rodgers right now. He's the yeah. last man standing. You know, we had a period of time where we had this golden age of a cluster of older quarterbacks and a cluster of up-and-coming young quarterbacks, and now that's shifted. We've got a bunch of great quarterbacks under 30, a bunch of them, and Rodgers is the last man standing pushing 40. He is. He is. He's, he is the last of that, you know, old generation, right, where, where yeah, like you said, Rivers, Brady, Manning, Rodgers, that, that whole Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, right, you know, Eli Manning, all that, all that's, that's all, you know, over with, right, except for Rodgers. It is a new era, and, yeah, I mean, who is it that's next that you look at as older quarterback? I mean, it's really the next guy you kind of think of is Kirk Cousins. It gets into that. Russell Wilson. Yeah, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr. I mean, that's where we're at. You're right. It's a new regime. Stafford. And Stafford, yeah. I think that pretty much covers it all. But it's a new regime, and, you know, it, it's an awesome regime. We're certainly not starving for quarterback play. Uh, and then, of course, we got some young ones. We'll see what their potential is and if they can reach it here in the next year or two. And it is going to be very intriguing to see what Rodgers has left after last year. Two back-to-back -back MVP seasons, 2020 and 2021. Last year, there was a regression. Was it just fatigue emotionally and psychologically dealing with the Packers? He had gotten to the point where he'd had enough, or was it a sign of slippage? I don't want to what do you attach think? names what, what's to your, any of the – Well, yeah. what's your feel? I, I was intrigued last week by some of the conversations that was had among the various people from Football Night in America, and I'm not going to name names, but there was a sense from some that I'm not afraid of Rodgers anymore. Defenses aren't afraid anymore and shouldn't be afraid anymore. And I don't know that that's warranted at this point because he seems like a new guy. He seems like this fresh start is helping him. And he has wowed enough people in Jets camp. Now, the, the bar that was set by others before him, not very high. So maybe it doesn't take much to wow them. But I was kind of surprised to hear some people who are around the game and know the game suggest Rodgers doesn't scare defenses like he used to. Well, so that's what yeah. I'm going to be looking for week right. one against the Bills right. and well, week two against the Cowboys. I think it's a – I mean, you, you, you've you heard that, right? You've heard me say that. That's what we've talked about, right, when we broke down Rodgers in the quarterback countdown or, you know, even during the season when we showed certain clips, right? There's a lack of aggressiveness and a lack of willingness to push the ball down the field for a guy that still has a pretty incredible arm. And, you know, like we're, we, we've talked about before, too, it's just – it's 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 a game right now that's set up for big plays in the passing game. And if you're not taking advantage of that, you know, then you're really dropping the ball and not giving your team a chance to win. I'm going to bet on the latter. Like, I don't think I'm going to bet that Rodgers comes out as a different guy and is more aggressive and this new energy and wanting to prove to his teammates and show them that he is the guy and wanting to get Garrett Wilson the ball. And like you talked about, the emotional recharge just from – you know, from Green Bay, all that he had to deal with there. This is all exciting, new, everything like that. I'm going to bet more that we see the better Rodgers, that we see one that's a little bit more aggressive, right? It, it, I, I really look at it in a lot of ways like Brady going to Tampa. That was one of the issues there. And what happened, right? Bruce Arians kept poking the bear. Hey, oh, there's, there was people open. He should have held the ball. There was people open downfield. You know, he's not playing well. He 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 poked him a lot. Rodgers, I don't know if anybody's going to poke, poke him there. Rogers. Well, Who's going to poke Rodgers? I don't think Nobody. anybody's going to poke him other than that. We're all poking him. We're all looking at him right now, just like we're talking about right now. We didn't even mean to start the show with him, and here we are 12 minutes, and we're talking about him, and we're poking him. And I think he knows that, and let alone it's the Jets media and New York media and everybody has got him under a microscope. So I think that's kind of his Bruce Arians, you know, the, the, the guy that's going to motivate him to kind of show, hey, I am still the guy here and we can still win games because of my right arm. Or just the residual 
hatred, for lack of a better term, that he feels towards some in Green Bay. Sure, he wants to that's stick more. It to them. We were, yeah, yeah. You know, my son and I were talking about that last night. Just how this this whole hey, everything's great. I'm great. I'm happy. I'm living great. Hey, Green Bay. You know, look at this. You could have had this for one more year or another more year, and I'm so much happier now that I don't have to deal with you people anymore. Not the fans, obviously. People in the front office. My son and I were also arguing about that schedule. I mean, the pivot point, I think, is week two. If they can steal that game from the Cowboys and Rodgers' former head coach, Mike McCarthy, yeah. they got a good shot at 3-3 three and three through the first six. And Robert Sala has talked about how getting through that gauntlet in 3-3 three and three would be such a major accomplishment. Two and four is what a lot of people are saying is more likely. The wins, the potential wins, Cowboys, Patriots, and Broncos with the losses to the Bills, Chiefs, and Eagles. And if they could still still one of those three games from the or steal as the case may be from the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Eagles, then four and two is in the works. Oh, yeah. So much is on that first game. Yeah. So much is on that first game. If they could come out of the gates and beat the Bills on that initial Monday night of the season, it's it's going to be a much different vibe. Because You're I right. Think it takes the pressure off right away. Yeah. 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 We're one month away from the start of the season, and I think as we get closer and closer to it, there is going to be, I think, just kind of this general acceptance that even though the Jets are different and that's where Aaron Rodgers is, oh, boy, look at the schedule. Oh, boy, look at the schedule. Oh, boy, they're going to have a hell of a time the first time third of the season yeah I, I mean I, I don't disagree with you there I mean this is still a young team right still a team that's learning how to win consistently be battle tested block out the noise I mean we saw it last year you know they kind of fell apart towards the end of the year I think that kind of spoke to their youngness there right that early season I'm with you you win week one that'll change and just allow everybody to take a deep breath right and I think they got to do a job, or, or, or Rodgers, he's got to make sure that you know, expectations are realistic for the offense early on, too. You know, that's the other thing. He's got a real team here, right? I mean, Rodgers, is, he's got a top five-ish defense here. It, it is. He hasn't had many of those in his career. So that gives him a little wiggle room where, you know, they don't have the pressure of like he did so many years in Green Bay where you were just like, if Rodgers doesn't ball out and throw for 315 and three touchdowns, I don't think Green Bay can win today, right? That's not the case. You know, now it's, hey, let's let's let the Demons do their thing. You know, I'll we'll, we'll move the ball, be consistent here, and I'll find my, you know, three or four times a game to strike and make a big play. And I just hope that the pressure doesn't get to them where, you know, Mike, they're in some 13-10 14-10 dogfights early in the year, and he starts to feel like, whoa, this is one that everybody signed up for. This isn't why they brought me to town. And then he starts to feel the pressure and push the envelope, and then bad things happen. So hopefully they can uh, you know, be realistic about what they might be early in the year and ride that wave, win some games, and then find a way to kind of explode and grow as the year goes on. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.